Hello and welcome to this video on using trigonometry to find unknown lengths in a right angle triangle. Now let's suppose that we had this right angle triangle here and we knew two of the lengths and we wanted to find the third length. Now what method would we use? We would use Pythagoras theorem. Remember that Pythagoras theorem relates the freed side lengths of a right angle triangle. So do you remember that Pythagoras theorem was a squared plus b is equal to c squared where the c was the hypotenuse. So if we were to quickly apply it for this particular triangle, we could say, well, 3 squared, one on the shorter side squared, plus the other shorter side squared is equal to, well, that's the hypotenuse, the longest side, x squared. And then, well, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. And then we can square root both sides to get x is equal to 5. So when two of the lengths are given, you want to find the third length, whether it's the hypotenuse or one of the shorter lengths, we use Pythagoras theorem. Now, what about this triangle triangle? Now the difference here is that we know just one of the sides, but we also know one of the angles other than the 90 degrees, obviously. So this time we've got two lengths involved and an angle rather than three lengths involved. And in this particular scenario, we have to use something called trigonometry. Now firstly, it's helpful to know how we label each of the different sides. So, as before, we call the longest length the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use H for hypotenuse. Now let's say that we were interested in this particular angle here, and we often use a Greek letter theta as a kind of variable for an angle, just like we often use x for unknown side length for unknown numbers. The side that's adjacent to this angle, do you remember that adjacent just means next to in English? So this side is adjacent to that angle, we write as A, and that stands for adjacent. It's the adjacent length. Now, how would we describe this side relative to this angle? Well, it's opposite to that angle. So we use O for opposite. So that's the name of the three sides. Now, we have some special functions in maths which allows us to relate the angle of a right-angle triangle with the ratio of two of the sides. So, for example, we've got a function called sine, and when we do sine of an angle, so it's like a number machine, it inputs an angle, and what it's going to do is it's going to output the ratio between the opposite length and the hypotenuse. And what I mean by the ratio, remember, is the relative size of things. So if I want to find out how many times bigger O is than H, I would do O divided by H. And that's what sine does. It takes an angle as the input, and it'll be clearer once we do an example, and then it gives you how many times bigger the opposite is than the hypotenuse, i.e. the ratio of those two sides. Now we've got some other functions, and then we'll use them on this example. Cos of theta, and that takes an angle again, and it tells us the ratio between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So how many times bigger is the adjacent than the hypotenuse? And then finally, we've got a function tan, and it takes an angle as its input and tells us how many times bigger the opposite is than the adjacent. And this is everything you need to know for this particular topic, including subsequent videos on this topic. And there's an easy way to remember this. The first letter here is S, the first letter here is C, and the first letter here is T. So we've got S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, and we get kind of this phrase here, so ca Toa. So that's a way to remember all these things. So sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cos of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. We can remember that as socatoa. So let's apply it to this particular example here. Well, how would we describe these three different lengths? So let's label them. Well, this length here, the x, is opposite to that angle. So I'm going to put an O in a circle. The only reason I'm putting in a circle is that I don't confuse this letter with the variable letter there for the length of the side. And how would we describe this length? Well, we've got the five. Well, that's the hypotenuse because it's the longest length. So I'm gonna put an H in a circle. Now we don't need to label this length because we're not involving that length in the problem. We can see that we've got the X here and we've got the five here. So we're only involving the opposite and the hypotenuse. So let's think, we're involving the opposite and the hypotenuse. Which of these three trigonometric functions involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, you can see, look, it's sine. That involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. So let's just substitute everything we know into this equation. So we've got the sine of the angle. In this case, the angle is 40. So it's always sine of the angle, cos of the angle, tan of the angle. And that is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite x 
over the hypotenuse 5. So we've got this equation here, and we just want to find what x is. Now, think of this as changing the subject. x is currently being divided by 5, but we don't want that divided by 5. We just want x. So how do we get rid of the divide by 5? Well, we do the opposite. We multiply both sides by 5. And when we do that, well, this becomes 5 sine 40, which just means 5 times sine 40, or 5 lots of sine 40. And when we times this by 5, it gets rid of the over 5, giving just x. And now we're done. So x is equal to 5 sine 40. And now you can do this on your calculator. So you do 5. You can see there's a sine button there. So press sine, input 40. And because it opens the brackets for you, you need to close the brackets. And then... I pressed equals and it's given me x is equal to 3.21 to three significant figures. Now don't worry how your calculator works out the sine of an angle. Um, it actually uses some theory in A level further mathematics. And make sure by the way that there's a D at the top of your calculator. And that means that the unit of your angle is in degrees. Believe it or not, there are other units of angles that you will do at A level, but you are only familiar with degrees. So make sure that your angle is in degrees and there's a D at the top. Right, let's do some more examples we have here. So we've got question two now, we've done question one, and it's this here. So I'm gonna just draw it a bit more straight. We can see we've got Y there, a right angle, we've got the eight, and we've got the 70 degrees there. So the first step is always label the sides. So what is this length? Well, it's the hypotenuse. It's the longest length. I'm gonna put H in a circle. And then how would we describe this length? Well, it's adjacent to, i.e. next to, that angle of 70 degrees. So let's label that as the adjacent. So then we look at our Sokotoa thing here. We can see we're involving the adjacent and the hypotenuse. It's so ka, the ka involves the A and the H, so it's gonna be cos. So we write, cos of the angle, so it's always cos of the angle, sine of the angle, tan of the angle, 70 degrees, is equal to the adjacent, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 8. And then to get rid of that divide by 8, we just times both sides by 8. So 8 cos 70 degrees is equal to y. And we do that in our calculator. 8 cos 70 is equal to 2.74, to three significant figures. And always check that your answer looks sensible. Could this be 2.74? Well, it's shorter than eight. So yes, it could well be the answer. And I've just realized that there's a unit of centimeters here. So we need to make sure our answer also has that unit there. It's 2.74 centimeters. Right, what about the third one? We've got this triangle here. I'm just gonna copy it as it is. We've got the right angle there. Then we've got the M here and a nine here and a 65 degree. So as always, step one, label your side. So how would we describe this side? Well, it's opposite to your angle. And how would we describe this side? Well, it's adjacent next to this angle. And by the way, just in case it's hard to spot what the hypotenuse is, because you can't see whether this line or this line is longer, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. So it's opposite the right angle will give you the hypotenuse. So we know that it involves the opposite and the adjacent, O and A. So you think soccer toa, toa involves the O and the A, so it's tan. So you write tan of the angle, which is 65 degrees, is equal to the opposite, nine, over the adjacent, M. Now, the reason this is a bit harder is because the variable, M in this case, which is what we want to find, is in the denominator of the fraction. Whereas before it was in the numerator and we could just times by eight. So what could we do? Well, we could times three by m first and sort of divide by this. But I've got a nice little trick, which I call the swapsy trick, which I've explored in other videos, particularly changing the subject. And it's basically this, which I find quite intuitive. Let's say you did eight divided by four is equal to two. What numbers could I swap in this equation so it's still true? Well, I could swap the number I'm dividing by four and the result to get me eight over two equals four. Clearly eight divided by two is equal to four. So you can swap that number you're dividing by and that result. And that's useful whenever the thing you want to make the subject, the, this variable here, is in the denominator of the fraction. So it means we can swap the thing we're dividing by and the result, the tan of 65. So we get m is equal to nine over tan of 65. And if I do that on the calculator, nine over tan of 65. By the way, if you don't close the brackets there, it actually closes it for you. And we're gonna get 4.2023 significant figures. 
What about question four? You've got three, you've got a triangle there, we've got 27 degrees, and we've got, I think that's the variable n. So we need to find the value of n. So step one, identify what side is involved. Well, this side, where the three is, is opposite that angle. So we put a little O for opposite. And this side, well, it's opposite the right angle, and it's along this side, that's the hypotenuse. So let's think back to Sokotoa. Well, we're involving the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, opposite and hypotenuse is here, so it's sine. So sine of the angle, sine of 27 degrees, is equal to the opposite three over the hypotenuse n. And then, because the n is in the denominator, we can use the swapsy trick again. So we can swap these two things, the thing we're dividing by and the result, to get n is equal to 3 over sine of 27 is equal to 6.61 to three significant figures. Let's just check that looks sensible. Well, look, 6.61 is longer than 3, and that's a hypotenuse. So that sounds sensible, doesn't it? Right, we've got a slightly harder one here, just because it has more than one step. So we've got to find this length x here. But the trouble is we can't use trigonometry directly on this triangle because we don't have any of the side lengths. So we couldn't possibly work out this side here. We've only got one angle and no other available information. Now, can you see that this side here is common to both triangles? So maybe we should use a left triangle here and try and work out what this common side is here, the length of this. Well, what information do we have here? We've got two of the sides, and we want to find this third side. Let's just call that um, y. Doesn't really matter. Now, what method do we know for finding the third length of a right angle triangle? Well, Pythagoras theorem. So, we can do 5 squared plus the other shorter side squared, the y squared, is equal to 13 squared. Now, we want to make y the subject. Well, y is being squared, then you're adding 5 squared. So we can subtract 5 squared from each side. And then when you do 13 squared minus 5 squared, you get 144. So how do you undo that squared? Well, you square root both sides. So y is equal to 12. So now we know that this side is 12, and we can use this triangle. So let's do the usual thing. We label the sides. So this side is adjacent to that angle. So that's the adjacent. This side here, where the x is, is the hypotenuse. So thinking back to Sokatoa, well, we're involving the adjacent the hypotenuse, so it's C for cos. So it's cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, which is x. Now, the x is in the denominator, so we can use the swapsy trick to get x is equal to 12 over cos of 58. And then let's just work that out. 12 over cos of 58 we get 22.6. So let's do this last test your understanding question, and I want you to do this one, and I want you to pause the video and work out the unknown length y. Now I hope you've had a chance to do that, so let's go through the answer. So we label the side, so this side here is opposite the angle, O. This side is adjacent to that angle, so it's A. So we look at Sokatoa involves O and A. Well, it's that one, isn't it? So it's tan. So it's tan of the angle, which is 35, is equal to the opposite Y over the adjacent 7. Now, this is one of the easier type ones, where the variable is in the numerator. So to get rid of that divide by 7, we just times both sides of the equation by 7. Do that on the calculator, which is equal to 4.90 to three significant figures. Well done if you got that right.